Hey Thumpers, welcome to another film review from Hyper RPG. Today we are here to review Dawn for the Planet of the Apes. Dawn? Dawn for? Oh, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. It's war. war. <laughs> you looked it up I and everything. I just looked it up. I was like, just, is war up You the just totally had a dyslexic it? moment that I usually have. You just uh, looked it up on your phone. Uh, war bitch. for the Planet of the Apes. Keep it. Keep yeah, it. Yeah. Count Wolf it. Wolf Planet of the Apes, uh, directed by Matt Reeves. This is the third film in a trilogy. Did he direct all three? No, Rupert Wyatt directed the first one, and then Matt Reeves took over the second one. The second, one. that's right. Uh, came in very late in the game, and it basically asked them that he, asked 20th Century Fox if he could kind of tell the story his way. Uh, and then this one is pretty much him, you know, really developing the story and developing and, and figuring out what the arcs are going to be for the characters from a much longer period of time compared to what Dawn of the Planet of the Apes was. So the titles are a little backwards. It should technically be Dawn of the Rise. Apes, but, you know, whatever. I mean, you didn't get the whole thing at the beginning where it was kind of like Rise of the Planet right. of the Apes, Dawn, War. There was this weird thing. Is this a spoiler this or not? Spoiler. Spoiler. Okay, spoilers. so right at the beginning, I chuckled a little bit because yeah. I was like, here's some text explaining what's happened to get us to this point. And in the 3D, especially, it was like an out of focus shot of the forest, and then boom, text slams in your face, and they would highlight the word. Rise, Rise, and then everything else disappears, and they'd highlight the dawn. word dawn, and then war. And I was like, uh, yeah, okay, I, <laughs> I know what I'm in for now. I chuckled a little bit because it felt a little heavy handed, but sure. that's exactly what the movie was. Yeah, I, well, I think also for people who maybe have not, because this is one of those weird franchises that when it's not in theaters, people forget about it. When it's in theaters, people are like, oh yeah, I forgot that they that twenty that Fox makes these ape movies. Yeah, nobody was there tonight. Opening night. Really weird. And it's really so weird, weird because when I booked the tickets, all the seats around us were filled. But no I one don't know was if people there. People were forgot or I don't know what the deal is. Very surprised though, because the last movie, people generally really liked the like the last movie. Mm -hmm. And some people even liked the first one. I was one of those people that I didn't love it, but I liked it enough that I was interested to see where the story would go. See, for me, the first one was especially a rent it. I did see it in theaters, and I was like, yeah, I wish I would have rented that. I just couldn't stand two hours of James Franco. I, sure. Only once in a while. Yeah. Only once in a while, and he didn't connect with me in that film at all. Uh, I enjoyed the second one a lot more. I don't know if I like the second one or this one more. Mm -hmm. I feel like I should like this one more, but there were there was more things in the second one that I thought were working better mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. To Interesting. Me. Yeah, the second one, I really enjoyed the second one a lot. Um, then this third one, I guess my expectation was going into it. I was kind of expecting more of what the second movie was. And I didn't realize that the movie, I guess I should have, because it is called War for the Planet of the Apes, that the stakes would be elevated and that there would have a, be a lot more emotion in the movie. And I Lots will, of emotion. I will say, from one of the very first scenes of the movie, I got really like emotional and teary-eyed. Really? I am a black pit of nothing. You are. I just... The music was trying really, really hard to tell me you're supposed to feel this right now. Mm -hmm. And I think that actually worked against me a little bit. I think the music was a little too heavy handed for me. The mm -hmm. score was pretty heavy handed. Uh, but I mean, that being said, Andy Circus is next level. He's next Unreal. level. Unreal. I care way more for Caesar than any human in any of these movies because oh, he kills it. He kills it. Uh, he's great. So I, I felt those moments. I really did. I felt those moments. The movie to me. Just I don't. It was a weird movie in a way. Like it had a weird pacing, a weird structure. Uh, you know, like the the middle and third act. Like to me, the structure was very strange. The pacing felt really strange. But I'm getting way ahead of myself here. <laughs> I'm getting way ahead of myself. There were some moments at the beginning that were very impactful, and I do appreciate that they just went for it. Yeah. Uh, they, I think that's kind of how the second movie was too, right? We kind of just kind of jump in. Yeah. And you're, it's it's kind of action. And it's funny because I, I was watching a lot of interviews with Matt Reeves and he was saying there's not a lot of action in this movie. But I feel like when they hit action, it was almost to a 10. At the, and, and it happened right at the beginning. Yeah. And actually, it made me feel like the movie had a lot more action than it did because it jumped right into it. Exactly. But that being said, my favorite part of the film was that middle act when it's the four of them mm -hmm. just traveling. Uh, you know, maybe we should set up the film first. Should we do that? I don't know how you guys usually with the reviews. Do you do a synopsis? We do you, usually do you don't. break into it? You just don't. talk about it? Yeah, we just so talk about it. So in the middle, it. I really liked it's it. a spoiler review, so we yeah, kind of yeah. go into it with the assumption that the audience has seen it. If it's a non-spoiler review, we give more context. Yeah, but if yeah. you're watching this, well, I like if you've seen it. <laughs> I really like that middle act where it's just yeah. a, the four of them. They're traveling. I, I, I felt the most for those characters when they were all together. And then... Uh, when they met their new friend, yeah, 
I thought that was great. And the rest of the theater did too. That was definitely the part that character hit really hard for everyone. And he was very needed in the film because it was totally. a very bleak movie. Yeah. Very bleak. Yeah. And I think that's to, up to that point, like very emotional and you're very much kind of just invested in the story. You're not really, you're so concerned with every character. There really is no balance, no levity. And then this character comes in played by Steve Zahn. What was it? Bad, bad ape, bad ape, bad ape. And he just immediately changes the dynamic of the movie. But I think it works so well because I think if that movie continued to just be what it was, it would feel it wouldn't feel as balanced as I think his character helped um, make the movie feel. Because all those other characters, they are very emotional. They have there are a lot of stakes, especially for Caesar. He's really he wants to get revenge for what happens to his family, to his son. He's and his wife. Kubo now. Yeah, he he is Kobo Kubo now. He, Kobo Kubo okay. Koba. Not Koba. Koba the two strings. You're Koba. so right. <laughs> I'm glad you caught it before YouTube comments <laughs> did. Um, but I think but I think yeah, I think what that does is it it adds a little more humanity to those characters too. I mean, they are apes, but because of their evolution, especially because of Caesar, how he continues to evolve more and more, his intelligence and everything sort of evolves. I think it kind of rounds out that group really, really well. Yeah, I think it does too. And it was good to have a, another, I thought that was the right moment to introduce another yeah. uh, ape that could talk. Totally. Uh, even if in a really funny way. Um, and his character was great. And I think I, I honestly thought I was going to be annoyed with the character just because that is a cliche of modern right. action movies and things like, that. Oh, you got to have, you got to have that Comic character movie. in there. Uh, and this movie really needed it, though, because it, it's it's a freaking sad ass movie, it's man. It's very sad. I mean, literally every time something very emotional would happen, I got I got super emotional. I was really invested to the emotion of the movie, and I there was moments where I got teary eyed. And it's even when characters die that don't necessarily have the most screen time, but just what they did five minutes before are so emotionally impactful that when they die, you really feel it. Yeah, you really feel it. like when the when the um, I forget what the, monk, the ape's name was that gave the girl the flower. Mm -hmm. But when he puts yeah. it, I was like, they're, they're, it just. That was another good moment. I actually yeah. thought that was a really good really moment. Good I thought the, actually, and I thought the girl did a great job. She was great. It's hard to emote yeah. without words, and she did a great Especially job. Especially because I, just based on the credits, it said introducing in the actress's name. If this is her first movie, and to have to interact with actors that are obviously not in costume, not, yeah. they're in these tracking marker uh, costumes. Like that's that's not the easiest thing to not, do. I'm gonna say it. I thought she did better at reacting to that than Woody Harrelson did. Yeah, I wasn't. I, I and I told you before the movie started. My favorite Woody Harrelson movies are when he gets to be a little unhinged yeah. and a little deranged. Yeah. And I I was really excited to see this one because he was in it and because the trailer had already shown us that was the type of character he was gonna be. And I I didn't buy it. Yeah, I like, just didn't. It didn't land for me. Everything that we saw Woody Harrelson in the trailer, it's. That's everything. That's a, that's kind of everything. And we see like the very, very high point of his emotion. And then you see little bits and pieces of him and Caesar fighting in the waterfall, which isn't even the end of the movie. That's so early in the beginning. So early and nothing really happens in that scene. No. In the in the in the trailer, the way it's portrayed, you really think that's gonna be this moment where there's a standoff and everything. Right. But I did like how it happened in this, because yeah. it was such an emotional moment for Caesar. Totally. But you think you're gonna need a lot more of him, and really, you just get the pre the the feeling of him, his presence. Mm -hmm. But I was so not intimidated by him mm -hmm. as a character that his presence, once we actually met him and got to talk to him, I was no longer threatened by him. Yeah, because yeah. it felt like Caesar's on another level. This guy isn't Caesar's right. like not even in his wheelhouse. Yeah, you know, he's yeah. not Caesar's. Even in the way he set it up too, you know, Lee and you know and everything he, like he's right. all going through all the famous general battles in history and saying that this is history right here and this is a monumental moment and all these things and I was like, I don't I don't know, I'm not feeling, man. I feel like Caesar's got you way beat because they're showing you know, like I feel like if you're going to show a character being that powerful, mm -hmm. uh and that much resolve and that much willpower like Caesar has, his adversary needs to have a similar trait, but with that evil, mm -hmm. the willpower match with the evil and stuff like that. And we didn't really get that. It was just menacing. Yeah, yeah. And it was interesting because going into the movie, I almost thought that Woody Harrelson's character was going to end up being someone who was colonel, but was really someone who was just seeking vengeance against the apes because of the death of his son or because of the infection mm. of his son. I didn't actually think that he was going to be somebody who was going, who is someone who like rose up through the ranks, who really was a colonel. I thought it was going to be kind of like this false image that they built up of, of this character in the trailer. Um, but that's not the case. And yeah, I feel like there was something lacking a little bit. And I feel like they tried to really build up those two characters to have a similar sort of path. 
with Caesar and the apes and the intelligence of the apes and how that kind of, even though it was a beneficial thing for the apes, it ultimately like kind of leads to their downfall or the hunt for the apes. Whereas Woody Harrelson, you know, it's all about his son and how he gets infected and how he has to kill him. And that, the very thing that he's trying to beat is the thing that ends up killing him. So I think like his death, his death worked for me for the most part, but I feel like there could have been a little more developed around him to make me feel it more. Yeah, and I just, I don't know. I had a problem with the overall de-evolution mm. concept in and of itself. Yeah. And th- and and I'm kind of on the fence because there's things I really liked about the film. I liked, in some ways, how the film felt classic. Mm-hmm. It doesn't feel the same as a lot of modern action films yeah. or a blockbuster, summer blockbusters right now, which is kind of refreshing. Uh, but I didn't like that story so because it just felt like they just kept hammering home this idea like he even says first it was the virus i'm like yeah we got that and it wiped out most of humanity Mm -hmm. and they made it so heavy-handed already in all three of these films that humanity will be its own end Mm -hmm. humanity will be its own end but then when you take that away and say now the virus is morphed and it's de-evolving us and we're turning stupid well you've already shown us the girl isn't stupid right you know, she's sick, she, she, but she's not she's sick, stupid. But she does adapt. Exactly. She yeah. adapts. And and I know that could just be he doesn't see that and it's just whatever. But it just felt like this layer mm-hmm. that was really heavy handed overall. And then the way the film ended with the avalanche, which is just this icing on the cake of nature is going to win. And I liked the message a little bit more that man will destroy itself. Yeah, yeah. And nature you like he said we started this right. man started it and they are their own destruction not the apes sure. not random happenstance of nature like mm-hmm. themselves each right. other uh and i thought that would have been a stronger message like i liked when they were getting away and the humans started killing each other and then i thought that whole woody harrelson bit was kind of unnecessary because like they're killing each other yeah. they're going at it for what yeah, yeah, yeah you know yeah i think uh the other thing too is uh, in terms of the whole subplot of, of de-evolution for, for humans, maybe, and th- like this is me just thinking about as a general movie-going person, for somebody who has not seen Rise or not seen Dawn, I feel like maybe some of that stuff was heavy-handed because I think Matt Reeves and those and that creative team is very aware that it's, it's ape movies, they're, they're playing out the ape movies. They need to be. They need to be able to self-contain. Yeah, because it's not a Star Wars. It's not a Marvel where like everyone watches these movies. It is something that like very particular audiences will watch and follow. People like us will obviously watch it. A lot of people who are watching this video have watched and followed the mm-hmm. series. But somebody like my mom and my brother, who are not exactly people who like rush the movies, I have to tell them you need to go watch this movie because. And if they don't have all that context, then I feel like they're going to be walk out of the movie going, I don't get it. Like what happened? Um, and I don't think this movie necessarily gives you every single beat, beat of what happens before it. It gives you a gives prologue. You some. Yeah, it gives you a prologue. Koba shows up a couple times. Exactly. You feel that he did something there. and Right. I feel like if anything, if you're a general movie-going person who hasn't necessarily seen all the uh, first two movies, you hopefully will be intrigued to go back and be like, oh, where did this start? Hopefully. Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms of the man versus nature or the nature nature winning – I still do feel like it was man ultimately. Well, yeah, they himself. caused the avalanche. Sure, they sure. caused it. But just sure. I mean, it's it's done in a, it's done in in a different sort of manner than you would kind of expect. You would think that it would just be man killing man, apes getting away, and apes ultimately you know being free. Um, I didn't I didn't mind it so much, but I I can see why people would would not be a fan of that. Yeah, I I mean I do like what you say though about it being self-contained because if i hadn't seen the other two movies i probably wouldn't mind that as much Mm -hmm. honestly uh because that it it does help contain it right because if you haven't seen them giving it that context of like okay why can't the girl talk why is he so right it's a tough balance right because you're going you're going into a franchise that like people know historically because it's so well known from 40 years ago but maybe they just don't follow it. So it's like it's that tough balance of we have to give people this information, but people who have seen it might be like, you're really just like shoving this in my face. I don't mm-hmm. need all this context. But I will say, and yeah, I, I think what you were saying earlier about Andy Circus, unreal. Yeah. I mean, the I I think I absolutely love the first thirty minutes of the film. Mm-hmm. Uh everything that was happening in the forest. Actually probably the first hour, hour and a half. 
I didn't think the film started to suffer until we got to the army base mm -hmm. and we were stuck there in the camps and right. and it just had this it just dragged for me there and maybe it was because the human characters were so uninteresting sure and this That's is their fair. main the main antagonist and I just didn't find them interesting at all yeah. and I liked them traveling together and I liked the beginning and that first fight at the beginning you know to establish all that and then riding into battle on the horses right. was pretty cool that was rad in the yeah it was beginning. super cool yeah. and then you know just the very brief moment you see with this family and how quickly that gets ripped away from yeah. him I thought that was really great he's just like oh his son's back and mm -hmm. shit yeah. <laughs> uh, that was really good I, li yeah. I liked all that a lot so I don't want to I don't want to totally shit on the film because I, I enjoyed those moments mm -hmm. a lot yeah, well, I think I think that's that is part of the problem of a movie that moves so well for like the first hour, and then you get stuck in one spot. You don't literally, move they're out of that stuck. Spot. Yeah, yeah, you literally don't move out of that spot. And I actually did think that the movie was going to continue to advance, and they would go maybe go to a, a new location, or if not a new location, just continue advancing towards where they were going and fighting the battle on the way there. But yeah, this movie literally just like sits itself in this base. And you're there for, I don't know, it's like a good 45, 50 minutes of the movie. Yeah, it's a good chunk. It is a good chunk. And he, you actually made a comment, which is is very valid. Oh, I got to bring this up, man. <laughs> I got to bring this up. It's an army base. There's lights everywhere. They can't see shit. <laughs> and you show us people everywhere. Yeah. It'd be one thing if the base looked deserted at night because there weren't many men right. and women at the base. It's Packed. Yeah. When they show all the people lined up at the beginning, I'm like, where the fuck are all of them yeah. at night? How did no one notice that all these apes are gone? All the apes are gone. Not only that, but when the little girl's walking around right. and she's just no walking through her. the lights, no yeah. one sees it. And that continuity of that scene really bothered me too because she started walking forward and then a lot of time passed and all of a sudden he's a bad ape is like, oh, she's in there. And it's like, what the fuck? She walked up there forever. Was she just standing out in the middle of the field for a long time and nobody saw her? Yeah, yeah. There was, and when they were releasing the the the, the children, the you know, uh, the young apes and running around the camp and everything, there's they literally show us lights moving around all the time. Who's operating those? What are the fuck are they pointing at? Nobody sees anything. Yeah, it was like playing Splinter Cell on the easiest difficulty. <laughs> Yeah, that that was that was the only like one of the that was the biggest thing for me watching the movie, especially in that that whole sequence of like, how has nobody noticed? And it's not until the base is being attacked that the soldiers are running, and then that one soldier. It's the one dude, and they did that because it's the one guy, right? The one guy who's the like, one guy who that like we're supposed to be like walks Ooh. in, and like still nobody knows that the apes are gone, and I'm like. I guess their priorities have completely changed, but like mm -hmm. nobody knows. And then there was this. also the continuity of them escaping because they showed so many of them getting away, and I the was time so confused with how many of them were getting killed. Exactly, and then the timing was really weird. Yeah. And then later, all of a sudden, they see them down there escaping. I'm like, wait, weren't they already all gone? Yeah, that's what they I got thought. away before. So there was some weird continuity and editing stuff happening there at the end. Um, they made it just look like it was most of the adults who had stayed behind. Got a lot of them get killed and all the all the children up at the top yeah. of Maurice, um, but I, yeah, like this movie and I we saw it from the trailers. The visual effects were unreal, unreal, like so good. If you're so good. if you're a Marvel, DC, a Star Wars, or whatever, you need to watch this movie. And yeah, watch they're not even close. And it's crazy because Weta does a lot of the visual effects for the DC movies, and I'm like. Nothing that you do no. looks as good as Planet of the Apes. It's very true. Nothing they've done looks that good. Because, I mean, you, you think about all the different environments that they're in, yeah. all the different interactions, and how good it looks in every situation. And how a lot of those movies are like, all right, just put it in the fucking dark. Right. You know, put a cape on it so it's harder to see everything. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, it's, it's just make explosions, shroud a lot of the action yeah. with that. They show you this stuff. I mean, do. them riding on horses it's all amazing. the time and, you know, fighting and everything. Like, it's good. I mean, good. there's a, there's a point where Maurice meets the little girl in the room. And where his face gets like oh, really super close. close. Oh, I'm like, Holy fuck. fuck, how is this not real? Dude, yeah, like that, that fork Iron Man that, in, in 15 movies, Iron Man has never looked as real as Maurice did in that one yeah. show. Yeah. It's incredible. That was well, you forget. It's so you good, do. you forget. Yeah. And that to me is the real beauty of these films. You do believe that these apes are speaking in their real and Absolutely. that they're sign language and then they're real. You just you start believing it. You yeah. are bought in. You you buy into it completely. And I think I think that's part of the thing that really helps it is the fact that not all the apes can speak. 
mm-hmm. only Caesar, and then we meet Bad Ape in this movie who can talk. Oh, but Maurice and, at the end, he, he's getting it. Like getting some it. of them know a few words, but it's this. I think it's really the sign language, the mannerisms, the movements, just like the. I don't know. Like you feel the weight. A lot of times when you see these characters that are digital, and a lot of it's because there's no reference. You know, they just put these characters on there, and they just look really lightweight, and they mm. don't feel like they have any bones in their body. These apes really felt like they had bone yeah muscle like everything it was unreal it was unreal for the performance stuff when when i hear any circus talking about how like we don't need another category for motion capture like we are actors this is our yeah craft. and you know, what's really interesting true. is thinking about each film and like they they do a great job in this one just establishing he's still learning and he's still growing Absolutely. so if it bothered you the way he speaks in the last one He's clearer yeah. in this one. He's much more articulate. Yeah, it's a two-year time gap. So yeah. in two years, he's evolved along with the other apes. And you definitely see that. Yeah, once he started talking, you're like, wow, he's really been developing. And even, I, I'm not, I don't remember which, so it might have been Woody Harrelson's character who says, like, those eyes, like, you even look more human. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, a, it's really interesting. Uh, I actually, the you score really for the are mo- impressive. Yeah, you really are impressive. The score for the movie, I... Even though it, it is a bit emotionally I, handed, I times, liked I liked, I liked a lot of the stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked most of the scenes. It was when it got emotional. There was right. some stuff they're doing, like the little like fairy sparkle sound effect. Right. And I don't know why they kept using. Any time <laughs> a sun was rising or something was supposed to be happy, it's like, and yeah. I'm like, what the hell? Why? <laughs> but I hate it, joy, so I don't. It's just yeah, me. It's just me. Dark person. <laughs> right, but. <laughs> Uh, I thought it was really good in spots. I don't yeah. want to. I don't want to totally shit for on sure, it. For sure, for sure. It's easy for me to sound like I hate things. <laughs> I, I enjoyed it. That's I had why a good I time. I live here. I know. I had a good time. Now, I, I had a really great time. I, I, I mean, I, I guess I did enjoy the movie more than you did. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I really, really liked this movie, and I was honestly just really surprised at how emotionally invested I was. And even though not all the motion hits with all the characters, when you see these apes in pain or being or just distraught. And you look at them and you see their emotion, like it jumped right out of the screen and hit me in the face. Oh yeah, so it hard, does. Like and an I wonder, I wonder how long you can. Do you ever start to feel uncomfortable because the human characters are so underdeveloped and you're not supposed to really care for them? No, I mean, I think and they over dramatize every single sure. ape death, very, very much so. They do, and I, I, I don't know. Like I, it doesn't. It doesn't bother me in that sense, and I feel like it's purposely done that way because mm-hmm. you, those apes are the main They're the character. protagonists. Yeah, I'm the playing character. devil's advocate here. I'm, yeah, not, yeah, I'm yeah, okay yeah, with sure, it. For sure, for um, sure. Yeah, and I think I think that's kind of the point is you you are supposed to really buy into it and really believe in it. Sometimes it doesn't need to be as heavy-handed as it, as it sometimes is, but I mean there are beautiful little character moments with some of those apes, and then they die, and you're like, fuck, I had... They're in the beginning of the movie, but you have like one little tiny moment with them that you really are on their level of emotion and then they die and you're like I don't know it just hit me like a tidal wave sometimes I haven't cried that much since like Logan I think really yeah. oh god I didn't even think about shedding a tear once ah <sighs> yeah, I didn't me. even get close it got me I, got I think I cried more in thing. Spider-Man you fucker that's just because it felt because <laughs> so, you love Spider-Man it felt so good <laughs> I was like oh god <laughs> Peter <laughs> <laughs> your hot aunt um overall i think this is a really solid trilogy uh, i've really enjoyed all these movies Th- i i would say that maybe this one edges out the last one a bit and I'd i think i like the second one most really yeah, I, think I think i'll probably I like call this one, one my favorite but i do have to go back and revisit it. i haven't actually seen it since like once it came out on blu-ray in 2014 so it's been two three years since i've seen it is that how far back the second 2014, one was? yeah and then Man. the first one came out in 2011 yeah so it's been it's been a while uh, other it's a good trilogy though. it is a good trilogy other interesting thing you know it's been six years in real time that these movies have taken place um, but in the context of the film series it's been like 15 years already wow really yeah in the prologue it's, I bl- I'm pretty sure it's at 15 years damn so that's kind of crazy to see like how long it's taken Caesar and these apes to really develop or most yeah, of Caesar he had quite a bit of gray in him this one yeah so. yeah yeah so overall love the movie I thought it was really really good emotion hit me surprisingly a lot more than I thought it was going to I thought it ends really well. You know, now I'm so curious to see where this movie goes. It leaves in a little bit of a cliffhanger. Like, we all assume that Caesar is dead. They play it up that Caesar is dead. Um, but Dude, I'm, he's dead. But I'm like, I'm Come so on. curious to see if Cornelius, his little son, 
will now take over if he'll now lead the pack are they are they planning on doing more i don't know i don't know i mean a lot of people are saying that this really bookends this trilogy beautifully it does. um so i'm i'm curious if if they do another one i don't know if matt reeves would come back and do it i mean i feel like he's kind of told the story of caesar which is the character that he kind of so you want him to just jump forward in time and do where they've built their society, and then you get the rogue Maybe. human that shows up? I'm, I'm a, then that's the thing that kind of worries me. I love where this movie ended so much that I'm afraid of them going back and touching it and doing another like 10-year time jump with an older Maurice and a Cornelius who's like grown up and all this kind of stuff. I I hope it wouldn't. If they do it, I hope it just doesn't hurt what these first three movies did. But, you know, what? There's like six or seven, eight movies from the 60s and 70s. That's a lot, dude. So... Malik and I were talking about it, and it's like there's one with the underground people and yeah. all the other stuff, and it's like, oh yeah, it gets we'll weird. I mean, they could, they could really, uh, they could honestly at some point just remake that first one and tie it into the series, but I don't know, I don't know how that would work. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out. Um, but you would give this, I, I assume you would give this a watch. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, I I still had fun at the movies. Yeah. I mean, there was some. It's it's worth seeing to me for the visual effects alone. Totally. The first hour and a half. Uh, I think I just got really let down by uh, the main antagonist in the film. Right. You know, and, and some of the heavy handedness there. But overall, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, had a really good time. thought the cinematography was actually really great, too. I loved it. It was like it had a not a unique color, but it just, to me, it stands out with all the other movies that we normally see. It has something that, like, superhero movies don't have. It has something that, you know, other f big franchises don't have. It feels, aside from the apes itself, it has like this like independent film quality to it. Aside from like the massive, I would, like, I would big actually stuff. agree with that, and that's part of what gives it kind of a weird tone that you yeah. don't expect. You you think it's going to be a big blockbuster summer right. movie, but it really doesn't have that feeling to it. No. Not at all. It really relies on the characters. Yeah, and some of it does better. It treats the, some characters better than the others, but overall, it is driven by. Caesar by the other apes and kind of like what their mission is, which is to be free and to not be a war with a human. So I thought all that was done really, really well. Overall, I loved it. I thought the 3D for the majority was done really, really well. There was a few moments where I spotted some things and things were out of place and some really weird things. But overall, I, I think that's the stuff that you guys won't notice. But I will say I don't think it's necessarily a movie that I have to see in 3D. Yeah, I, I think I would have just appreciated a regular 2D experience. Does it make the apes feel a little more realistic? Yes. But I, I think the performances and the motion capture and the actual visual effects, the art of it sells it just enough that if you don't see it in 3D, it's not really going to change the experience of the movie. I would agree. Yeah. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this review of War for the Planet of the Apes. I got the title right that time. Guys, let us know in the comments what you thought about the movie. We'd love to hear everything that you have to say, whether you liked it, whether you didn't like it, or if you loved it as your favorite of the trilogy. And... Where could this franchise go? I want to know. Where is it going to go? We're going to get ground gonna people. We're going to get. We're going to get future civilization of apes and so random curious. spaceman comes down and. It's going to be very interesting. If they I want to. I would. I'd be cool. That would be cool. I'm guys, also it. make sure you guys check out our Patreon. Uh, patreoncom slash HyperRPG. We're doing a whole bunch of content right here on YouTube. youtubecom slash HyperRPG. And be on the lookout all next week. For San Diego Comic Con coverage, We're doing a bunch of Comic Con Woo! coverage. It's going to be a packed weekend for us. Yeah, it's gonna oh be nuts. God, it's, we're gonna we're gonna die. we're gonna die. <laughs> we're gonna die. We're gonna come back and we're gonna be like, we're dead. We're dead. We're dead. <laughs> also, make sure you guys yeah. check out the Twitch channel, twitchtv RPG. Yep. So many lots hours of exciting of announcements Holy coming shit. up for you guys soon in regards to uh, just keep an eye on the Comic Con coverage. It's gonna be a good time. Be a good time. Be a good time. We'll see you guys in the next review. Bye.